Hey everyone, it's Christine here. Thank you for watching my channel, Christine's Cup of Tea. So today I get to go into a really fun topic. We're gonna talk about root beer teas. This, I've been super excited to talk about this. I've also been kind of anxious because there's a lot of components to this. It's not just about the teas and what tastes good. I think it's really important for us to understand the American history of root beer and why it's such a distinctly American drink and really who's to credit for some of these flavors and brews. If you do want to like the video and subscribe to my channel, that would be amazing. The things I talk about here are mostly tea, tea reviews, tea hauls, book hauls, book reviews. And just to forewarn, um, I am not a historian. I am not an expert on plants or herbs. Please don't take anything I say about herbs um, as fact because some of these herbs are actually quite controversial and I don't really know the ultimate verdict on some of this stuff. So please, if you're gonna try um, teas that contain sassafras, just do the research on it. See if you think it's safe. In most cases, the teas that I found, I actually contacted the people who made the teas and I found that the way that they were using them seemed quite safe, so I bought them. All right, so first let's go into some of the history of root beer. So when you first look up the history of root beer on say Wikipedia or Google or just some of the first articles that pop up, Typically, you come up with a man named Heinz because in 1875, he first marketed it. So he slapped a label on a bottle that was originally a root tea. And what happened was um, it became more worthwhile to call it root beer to sell more teas because he was selling to a lot of miners who had a lot of health problems, aches, pains. Charles Heinz, he started selling it first. He had Heinz root beer. That was the first root beer the first with the name root beer company, right? Then after Charles Hines, you get up to Barks root beer, which is the late 1800s. They actually just use a sarsaparilla formula. So they were making root beer and selling it. Um, it became quite popular. Often root beer was sold in the form of a syrup that you could make at home. And it became very popular to make it um, with some foam. So you'd ferment it almost like kombucha, but they would ferment it so that it would have a very small alcohol content. Now what I want to get to is that the herbs that were used to make these root drinks were all herbs that the Native Americans were using in our country for centuries, as far back as we know. They had been using sassafras, sarsaparilla, wintergreen, especially sarsaparilla and sassafras. Those were used medicinally. In Britain, they were using things like barley and, and some grains that then were not found in America. So when the settlers came over, they started doing, the, they started brewing the same things that the Native Americans were brewing to make and eventually just became root beer. But what I really want to get to is that some of these ingredients were used by the Native Americans for so long. And I found it kind of sad that there was a real lack of information about this um, when I went to look up the history of this. I would go as far as to say it might be a case of cultural appropriation, at least in the sense that they basically took a drink that people were making here for a long time and then credit it with their name once they were able to sell it as a product. I really want to point out the credit that Native Americans have been brewing these American plant ingredients for a very, very long time. We don't know what drinks they made. I don't know what drinks they made. I would love to know what drinks they were making. We don't have a lot of history on that because our country is trash when it comes to Native American history and culture, and it's honestly very sad. So I'm just going to be right up front and say that. Now we're going to get into the plants a little bit because when you jump to 1960, all of a sudden the USDA bans sassafras which is one of the main components of early root beer. The saffroil, which is the oil found in sassafras, had been known to cause liver, liver damage and it was carcinogenic. At least this was studied on rats in studies. Now, those were obviously in larger amounts and it was the oil concentrate. So we're kind of in a funny situation right now where sassafras actually is still used in some of these teas. Because it is an old um, medicinal plant, it is a flavorful plant, it was originally the core flavor of root beer. But now, and it, it's, it's banned loosely, where some of these companies may use like a safroil free sassafras, even though it is not exactly proven that it's 100% safe. But when they use it with other ingredients, it is legal. So as I go through these teas, you're going to see two of them that actually do contain sassafras. And like I said, I cannot tell you whether that's 100% safe. I definitely wouldn't recommend drinking them all the time. Sarsaparilla, on the other hand, was actually supposed to aid in liver health, skin health, sexual health, 
and inflammation, pain, a lot of great things. So this plant can do a lot. So just to list off a few extra um, ingredients and flavors that were commonly used in root beer, you also get vanilla, caramel, wintergreen, black cherry bark, licorice root, nutmeg, acacia, anise, um, molasses, cinnamon, sweet birch, honey, probably more. Okay, so before I get into the blended root beer teas, I want to point out this tea. I didn't make a cup of it right now because I'm already making a lot of other cups of tea for this video, but this is just straight sarsaparilla tea. It's so cool. It is officially Jamaican sarsaparilla. I actually emailed them to find out. Um, this is supposed, I've been brewing it up. It's delicious. It's like a mild sort of sweet woody taste maybe. This does not taste like root beer, like straight root beer. It really just kind of tastes like a sweet um, planty drink. I guess I would compare it to rooibos if I had to compare it to anything, but it's milder than that. It's a lighter color. It does have some natural sweetness to itself. So this is from Brooklyn Tea. All right, so the first two teas I'm gonna go over are the two that contain sassafras, which is super interesting, and I was kind of nervous at first, and I actually contacted both of the companies to find out like where, the, where it came from, like, is this safe? Um, and yeah, Nelson's Tea said they showed me the, the exact clause from the USDA saying that it is not the, the main part of the drink. It is not like concentrated safroil. It's just some of the bark. So it is safe um, as far as I know. So this is Nelson's Tea, really root beer. I very much wish I got a bigger bag. I only bought the sample bag. I kind of wanted to try it a few times to see how it turned out in different ways. Now I'm just going to go over the ingredients real quick. We have sassafras bark, sarsaparilla root, birch bark, burdock root, dandelion root, licorice root, fennel seeds, anise star, ginger root, cinnamon chips, juniper berries, and natural flavoring. So here we have a really, really cool compilation of ingredients that are mostly American found and have been mixed for centuries in this country. So what we're tasting here, it's an herbal infusion, but it is very much an American root beer drink, American root tea. All right, let's taste it. Let's taste it. And it really does have the essence of root beer. You also do get a sense of like a kind of a ginger tea. Like it's reminiscent of if you were to have like a, a light, it's not super gingery, but it's like, it's that sort of body of tea you do get a little spice of ginger and cinnamon but they're they're light they're in the background i think what you're really getting is sarsaparilla and sassafras mm, it seems really pleasant this is something that you can drink at night you can make it iced or not iced like i said i should have gotten a much bigger sample so that i could have more try it ice try it a few different ways i really enjoy this i'm a big fan of herbal infusions so this is just the kind of tea that I like to relax with. They're quite famous for this tea. It's delightful. Okay, now we're gonna go, now we're gonna go to Rebecca's. This next one is from Rebecca's Herbal Apothecary. I ordered this from Colorado. So this one has a different list of ingredients which I'm gonna list out. For Rebecca's you have dandelion root, wildcrafted sassafras, which side note, I did message them and there are people that go out and find wild sassafras roots. She explained that it was from the bark of the root, which is super interesting. Ginger, cinnamon, wild yam, licorice, orange peel, dong kai, wildcrafted black haw, black pepper, and it's certified organic. Now this one, I think she recommends this for if you're under the weather, if you kind of have a cold, so that's, I get sick all the time, so I think this is great. But let's taste it. Let's see how much it tastes like root beer. Okay, ready? Oof. Okay. So this one, you do get the element of root beer, but truthfully, I think this one has a lot more ginger and a lot more licorice. So it it just has, it tastes similar to this. It is still an herbal infusion. But I do think if you're under the weather, this is probably the better choice. And maybe if you just want that powerful ginger taste. So this one doesn't have the like extreme sense of root beer. Now this one has sassafras and sarsaparilla. This one does not have sarsaparilla. So it's a little different. But this is supposed to be a sassafras soother root beer tea. I don't know if it's supposed to be a replica of root beer. I'm not sure that any of these are really supposed to be a replica of root beer but it is more of a soothing root beer uh, laced tea, I guess you could say. It's got a bite. This one has a bite to it. 
It's got a ginger bite. It's quite delicious though. Oh, and it has black pepper. That's probably where that bite is coming from too. It's super nice. This would be really great if you're sick. I would love to try some of her other teas. I feel like her shop is really cool. A lot of like health related teas. All right, so these are the two herbal infusions that both contain sassafras. Now we're gonna move on to a few teas that are rooibos and black tea based that are more flavored of root beer. All right, so now we're gonna go on to the rooibos and black teas. Now keep in mind, rooibos is definitely not grown in the United States or America at all. And black tea, typically not, it can be, but I'm pretty sure this was imported. Let's see, it just says black tea. We don't know. So when it comes to just straight up root beer yumminess, this Tin Star uh, Honey Bush and Rooibos blend is so yummy. Like it is, I love Honey Bush anyway though. It's real good. With this, we've got Honey Bush, Rooibos, Sarsaparilla, Vanilla, Stevia Leaf, and Natural Root Beer Flavor. Some of you might not like Stevia, so then maybe don't drink this. I don't really mind Stevia. I find, you know, there are teas that maybe they put a little too much, but it is a plant, so I kind of am okay with it. I don't really view it as an artificial sweetener. Oh my goodness, this one is like drinking a root beer float. I don't know, I mean, it doesn't have ice cream or anything, but I mean, I love this one so much. This one is from Tin Star Teas. They are a Texas-based tea company. I've got family from Texas, so a little bit of emotional connection there. Um, yeah, but it's not exactly like what people were drinking out in the Wild West for real. So if you're looking for a more authentic um, root beer experience or root tea experience, I would go with the first two. I recommend this one very much. Okay. Then we have Simpson and Vale, which is not a honeybush, but it's a rooibos based tea. And this one is a lot more affordable. I found that I could get this bag for a good price. And all it has is, uh, it's a little bit pared down. So it's just rooibos, sarsaparilla root, and root beer flavor. It's quite delicious. It definitely has the essence of root beer. It's just kind of like a red rooibos base. So I love both. I love honeybush and I love rooibos. But if you're... I don't know if you don't like honeybush, maybe you'll like this one better. This one's a little simpler. It's super easy to drink. It does not have stevia. So if you're not a fan of stevia, I would do this one. All right, and then lastly, I have sti I, well, I had to get one black tea. I know some other, I think, Sim I think Simpson and Vale also makes a black tea uh, root beer flavored, but this one I got from Stash Tea just to mix it up. So this is their root beer iced tea. So they do recommend you do it iced and that is exactly what I did. My brother came over for his birthday and it was like the perfect time. I made a big pitcher of iced tea for this and it was delicious. I'm gonna try it right now hot just so I can talk about it like in present tense. It's really good. It's So it's just black tea. They don't say which black tea. In order, we have sarsaparilla black tea, monk fruit, root beer natural flavor, vanilla extract, and wintergreen oil. Now, wintergreen actually really is one of the original ingredients in a lot of root beer blends. This one, honestly, it really does taste like a good old-fashioned southern iced tea with root beer flavor. So this one is super fun. It really was like the perfect drink to make for a party. All right, everyone, so this is my little collection of root beer teas I'm sharing with you, my little bit of history. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video if you enjoyed this at all, and let me know if you've had any of these teas or what you think about some of the plants, if you know anything about the history. I am super interested in all of that. The ones that I want to get again are the Nelsons. I want more of it to make more different cups, to try it iced. I think it's such a clever blend of American ingredients. And then also the Tin Star is just delicious. That kind of like roasty vanilla flavor is that I'm all about that. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your cup of tea.